In this video, I'm going to show you a GFCI installation, and I have a guest here with me. His name's Luke. Luke, do you want to tell him a little bit about yourself? I'm Luke. I'm a student at a local trade school, and I'm here to help with the hands-on part of the video. And something he didn't mention, he's also my daughter's boyfriend. Let's get started. Here's the demonstration wall we're going to be using for this GFCI outlet. This represents the stud, this represents the stud, and this represents the stud. This is the bottom plate and top plate of a wall. The first thing that Luke's going to do is put the outlet boxes at the correct height, and then he's going to run the wire at the correct height in order to go into the boxes for the wiring of the GFCI outlet. And something else I'd like to mention, I always wire my own houses when I build them. I pull the proper permits, the inspections get done, and that's how we can do it in my area. But check your local building codes because you may not be able to do that. You may have to hire a licensed electrician. And if you're not comfortable with electrical work, be sure to hire an electrician to do your electrical work. So Luke's going to start here by placing the outlet boxes at the correct height and then placing the wires to those boxes. Go ahead, Luke, show them how that's done. What he's doing here first is we're going to use a framing hammer. They're typically 16 inches high and he's marking the bottom of the box here for the install. And that's just a quick method to get your height of your box is just use a hammer. You could also use a laser level or snap a chalk line for that height if you don't want to go through at each stud. But it's easy just to use a framing hammer for your height. So Luke's going to mount the single gang electrical box onto the wall. And when he does this, he's going to line up the box with the mark. So the mark's gonna be right at the bottom of that box and he's gonna drive the nails. So he now has this box at the correct height. He's gonna install one here as well. And this would be the sequence if you're going to install multiple receptacles. So now that we have the two boxes up here, clearly in a real world situation, you would not have your boxes this close. It's only like this simply for the demonstration so we can show how you can pass through a GFCI to power another outlet to have the same protection. Now typically when you install your boxes, you don't want them any further than 12 foot apart on a run of a wall for a general reference. So now what he's going to do is drill the holes for the wire that's going to come in here to power the GFCI and then the wire to going through this stud to this outlet. So he's going to go and do that now. And he's going to use a three quarter inch drill bit just for the sake of if we reuse this demo wall, we can run multiple wires in the hole, but you could get away with a half inch hole just for a single wire. When Luke drilled those holes out, he made sure that he was in the center of the stud because you gotta be at least an inch and a quarter away from the edge of the stud when you drill a hole for an electrical wire. And also, he wanted to make sure that he wasn't too close to this box because we're going to have to staple the wire before it enters into the box in order to have it secured properly. And we wanna make sure it's stapled within 12 inches of this box. So if we drill our hole roughly six inches above the box, then we're clearly have plenty of distance to place our staple. So now Luke is going to run our 12-2 wire to power our GFCI outlet. In my area where we wire houses, we need to make sure that we have six inches sticking out from the face of the electrical box when it comes to wiring outlets. So what Luke's doing, he's actually using his pinky and thumb to get that distance Then he adds a couple inches and he's going to go ahead and pre-strip that now using his wire strippers. And that's going to be easier to do it before he places it in the box. He pulled off the sheathing. He's now going to remove the paper. It's very critical that you do not have any paper left in your receptacle box because that is definitely a fire hazard. So no paper in the electrical boxes. Now that he has the sheathing off of the wire, he's going to punch out the back of the box and that's going to give an area to push the wire through. Luke's now going to fish his stripped wires through the outlet box. And now that he has the wires through, before he staples this, we're going to run another wire to this electrical box because we're going to show you how you go from a GFCI outlet to a standard receptacle, and you'll still have the protection here. So because of that, he's not gonna staple this quite yet. What Luke is doing now is he's going to predetermine the length for this outlet. So he's gonna get the wire to the rough length and cut it before placing it in the wall. And that's just because he's in so close proximity from this electrical box to that electrical box. So in real world, sometimes you would just 
hook it into a box, then roll it out to get to the correct length, then cut it. So he's gonna do this now. The great thing about the wire strippers that he is using is they will actually cut the outer jacket without cutting the conductors whenever stripping off the jacket. You can see it cut right around it and he can slide the jacket right off with no problem. He then is going to peel the paper away from the ground wire and also the paper that's beside the conductors. So now we have a clean wire that we can easily fish through the electrical box. And he is now going to do the same to the other electrical box for the GFCI outlet. The wire that we're running here is what's called 12-2 Romex. And what 12-2 means, it's 12 gauge wire, meaning it can handle up to 20 amps. And it's two, meaning we have two conductors in the wire and one ground. So that's our 12-2 wire explained. We now have the wire ran from box to box, so he's gonna go ahead and staple it into place using wire staples. Here you go, Luke, have the honors. Oh yeah. Here he's holding the two wires together, and then he's gonna place the staple over it, then drive the staple. And you'll notice we are well within the 12 inch range to have the staple placed. Now that we're secured here, we're going to secure the other wire. What Luke's going to do here now, he's going to get the box ready by stripping the wires. And after he gets the wires stripped, we're going to install the GFCI. And something you may not know, on the back of a device, oftentimes it tells you how much insulation you need to take off the wire. There's a strip gauge here, so that's pertinent information, especially for these that have the backstab option. So you definitely want to look at the back of that if you're second guessing how much to take off. What he's doing here now is twisting the ground wires together using his linemans, and that's going to give us a tight connection for our ground wires. He's now going to use his side cutters to cut the length of one of the ground wires, and that's going to give us an area to place a copper crimp sleeve on to make sure we have a good bond for all of our ground wires. After he places on the crimp sleeve, he's going to use his crimping tool to crimp the sleeve down tight around both ground wires. And he's gonna tuck them in nice and neat in the back of the box to give room for the outlet. And you can see what it looks like after it's all done. Now what Luke's going to do, he's going to strip the wires to prepare to install the device. In order to do that, he's going to use his wire strippers. He's using the strip gauge on the back of the device to see the length he needs. He's going to use his wire strippers to get it to that length. And the wire strippers that he's using are different than the ones you see me use in my previous videos. We're going to use mine in the other receptacle so you can see those as well. Whenever stripping the wires to be placed on the GFCI outlet, you wanna be sure not to bend them too much at the end because they need to be relatively straight to go in the back of the GFCI outlet easy. And also, if you're interested in his wire strippers or even my wire strippers, I'm gonna show you later in this video, I'll put a link to them in the description below. We're now going to wire the GFCI and a little bit about these you'll notice that you have a reset button and you also have a test button. The test button is to see if the GFCI is working properly and the reset is if you kick it, that's how you reset it to reuse it. Now, obviously when you test it and it kicks, you just reset it. A lot of people don't know that. And also on the back, you have a line side and you have a load side. So the load side is going to go out of this device to protect any downstream outlets. And whenever you connect them to this device, this is where it would come out of to do that. And this is the line side. The line side is where the power source goes into. So if you're placing this on just a single receptacle for a home run for a dedicated circuit, you're going to go right into the line side. The silver screw is going to accept the white. And then the gold screw is where it accepts the hot, which is usually the black wire. And then these are where you would backstab into the back. And then down here, like I said, is where you come out to go to the next device. And here at the top of the device, you will see that's where the ground wire goes. Oftentimes the load side will have yellow tape over it. So if you're coming from your power source, make sure that you go to the line side. We're going to wire this GFCI right first. Then after we wire everything, I'm going to show you what happens if you wire it wrong. What he's going to do now is hook up the ground wire first. At the top of the device, like I mentioned, that's where he is going to clamp it down. Now that he has the ground hooked up, he's going to hook up the line side as if it's going to be a dedicated circuit. So this is going to be coming from the power source. So again, the black goes to the gold screw and then the white goes to the silver screw. 
They get slid in really snug and then tightened up the terminal really snug as well. He's now going to do the white side, which is your neutral. So right here, if you are not going to be adding outlets after this, that's all there is to making the electrical connection. But because we're adding a receptacle to show you how that protects that as well, we're going to connect the wire to the load side that is going to be going out of the device. Now what Luke's going to do is fold the wires back into the electrical box nice and neat so that when he puts his device in, it is going to fold out of the way and not cause any issues with the installation. He's now going to place the screw into the electrical box to hold the receptacle into place. Here is where you would typically have your drywall installed first, but for this demonstration, we're going to secure the receptacle down. He's now going to tighten up the screws using a driver. We now have our GFCI installed in this outlet box. We're now going to install a standard duplex receptacle and something I'd like to show you here on the back of this. We're going to have to make a loop to connect to these terminals because we do not use the backstab feature on these. It's definitely better to use these terminals. So we're going to show you how to prepare the wire to connect to the receptacle. He's first going to strip the wires. He's now going to use my wire strippers because he's never used these before actually. And I told him how great they were. So if you see just how slick this will strip the wire down, totally amazing, right Luke? Wow, man, <laughs> that's awesome. I know, pretty cool. So he's gonna go ahead and strip the black wire now. Luke's now going to place a loop, some people would call this a shepherd's hook, to be able to go around the terminals of the receptacle. You will notice as he makes his hooks, he's using a hole in the side of his wire strippers to make them. If you do not have these wire strippers, you can also use a pair of needle nose, grab the end of the wire, and then twist to make your hook. Just like you've seen me do in the past in most of my videos. Luke is now going to screw down the terminal that he is not going to use since we are going to be at the end of the circuit here. So we only need one gold and one silver screw for this installation. Luke's going to tighten up his loop slightly so that way it is snug around the terminals. Luke is going to install the ground wire to the ground terminal of the receptacle first. And you'll notice that the loop is around so when he tightens a screw it actually pulls towards the device and not away. And of course, white goes to the silver screw for our neutral, and then the black goes to our gold screw for the hot. We now have our wires connected to the receptacle. Here you'll see this is drove in all the way. This is where our white connects to. Then this is our ground. On this side, we have our black going to the gold screw. This one's drove all the way down, so that way it is not going to risk coming in contact with something. That's why you drive those down. And we are now ready to install this. Luke's now going to secure the receptacle in the box. We now have both receptacles installed. Now that we have this wired, Luke's going to plug the power in to power the receptacle so we can test out the GFCI. Now that we're plugged in, you can barely tell because it's so bright in here, but there's a faint green light on, meaning we have power. In order to test the outlet, we have what's called an outlet tester, and this is a GFCI outlet tester. We're going to plug it right into the receptacle, and these two lights on means that we are correctly wired. This has a color code chart here that tells you what the codes mean. So we're correctly wired here, so now we need to test out the GFI testing feature that's on the receptacle. Now in order to test this out, this receptacle recommends that you do it monthly. You just hit the test button and this one again, it wants you to test it monthly. So we're gonna see if it works. And it kicked. We now have a orange light here that indicates that. So if this does kick in real life usage or when you test it, all we have to do is press in on this reset button. We're now protected again and able to use this. 
So we're going to test out the standard outlet. We're going to test it with the outlet tester. We have a button here that we push in to test the GFCI feature. We're first going to plug it in to the receptacle. Our color code indicates that we are correctly wired. Now we're going to test out the GFCI protection. And we have kicked, so now we know we are protected so we can reset our outlet to gain power. All right, we reset the GFCI so we now have power back to this outlet. So we are correctly wired. Now that we showed you how to wire a GFCI outlet properly, we're going to show you what happens if you wire the line and load side backwards. He's going to disconnect the power to this setup so we can take this out and switch around the line and load side. You can see now right here that we have our load. This is actually coming from the power source, which is this wire going out. So that is what you do not want in a real life situation. You want it going to the line side. Now the line side here is wired to go out over to the device. So that is wired wrong. So we're going to test this out to show you what happens even if it's wired wrong. We now have this GFCI wired wrong to where the load and line side is reversed. So now Luke's going to plug this in to give me power to this outlet. Go ahead, Luke. And we're going to plug in our outlet tester to see if it has power, even though it's wired wrong. And you can see we still have plenty of power coming to this as if it's wired correctly. And that's to be expected because our black wire is going to the hot and our neutral is still going to the white. But watch this, when we hit our test button, it's tripped and the amber light's not even on, yet we still have power. So this is still live. So if this is wired incorrectly, you can see we still have power that could still be at risk if you're in a damp location of not being protected. So that's something to keep in mind. And we also tested this receptacle, and this is a GFI as well. And when we plugged this one in and wired it in backwards, when we tested it, it would not hold it with the power solid like this. It would trip shortly after. So there is different levels of sensitivity with these GFCIs. Now that we showed you how to install a GFCI outlet, which exact circuits do you need to have that protection on in a dwelling? Well, Luke, since he's in school, has a little insight on that. Luke, go ahead and let them know about what you've learned. So in 210.8, we have the code article for GFI protection, and it specifies for dwelling units, which is just residential houses. So it specifies that you need it within six foot of a sink, bathrooms, kitchens, garages, any outdoor areas. And those are basically the, um, just a rough idea of where they're needed. Yeah, so you'll know from watching my channel over the past several years, you see me install those outlets in the breakers to cover those outlets in my house, in my garage, etc. I'd like to show you there is a breaker that will protect circuits as well, just like we just did with the receptacle. So this will protect the whole circuit for GFCI and this one does AFCI as well, which is arc fault. So this is a combination breaker and you see me install these across my channel for several years and you'll know that I love to use these over the outlets because they're just simple to use and it protects everything downstream from the breaker and it's very simple for most people to understand. So if you'd like to see how I wired this exact garage, check out this video, it'll help you out.